Oh, the clinic is so beautiful. You're gonna have fun today. May all the kings of the earth praise you. Psalm 138, verses 4 and 5. Praise God. May all the kings of the earth praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. I want to read again Psalm 138, verses 4 and 5. May all the kings of the earth praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. May they sing of the ways of the Lord. For the glory of the Lord is great. I said to Father, You said as soon as we hear your word, we should begin to praise you. As soon as we receive your word, Concerning our situation, we should begin to praise you immediately. I said, Father, most of the time we don't want to praise you when things are looking in the physical not so good. We don't want to praise you. Why do you ask us to praise you when things are not yet working out the way we want it to work out. Why are you saying we should praise you, O oh God? <clears throat> then God revealed a secret to me, which I'm going to share with you today. And I pray that this will change your life. God said, I'm, I know why I am telling you to praise me as soon as you hear my word. I am your creator. I am your father. I am your God. I am the one who created you. I am the one who gave back to you. And I know why I am asking you to praise me as soon as you hear my word. Praise be to God. Amen. Please go with me to Ecclesiastes 3.15. Ecclesiastes 3.15 Anybody has the King James Version of the Bible to read for us? Ecclesiastes 3.15 That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been, and God required that which is past. Praise God. God said to me, he said, that which is to be is already so maybe you have come you are asking god for a financial breakthrough or you are believing god for a child no matter what it is you are believing god for god almighty is saying what you are asking for what you are crying about is already you can cry for now 20 years there's nothing i can do again that which is what that which you which you want is already. There is nothing new under the sun. God is not going to do anything for us anymore. God has finished. Praise God. That which will be is already. God is not going to do anything new again that He has not done for us. This, I just want to share a, a personal testimony. We wanted to change our carpets um, this week that we just, uh, this, this week here, yeah, I started there today. And then we looked at our budget and everything. And in the physical, it's like, we should postpone it, we should leave it for now. Then I said, hang on, I'm going to share a word. God is saying, that which you want is already. So, if that which I want is already, it's not about whether I'm able to do it or not. So, I held on to this promise. And I said, God, this carpet, I need a new carpet in this house. This one has to go. You said that which I need is already. I said, okay, Father, I will hold on to this word. And 
I just stood my ground on this death. Almighty God said that that which will be is already. So it means my effect is somewhere. If I give up now, that's the end. Then God started moving. He said, do this, do that, do this, do that. At the end of the day, we ended up doing the carpet for 200 pounds. Carpeted our whole bedroom. Our bedroom is bigger than this place, plus our daughter's room, plus the corridors, plus the stairs, plus everything we ended up doing it for 200 pounds. That which will be is already. When we look in the physical and say, ah, it's going to cost us a few thousands to do this. Ah, then I head on to the world. And God began to move. God began to move. The, our carpet was just two streets away. Praise God. The man gave us the carpet. God sent us somebody help to come and fix the carpet. Everything was done. That which will be is already. If we had given up and not put our faith in, we'll still be in the old carpet today. So by the time I got home on Friday, brand new carpets all over the house. Beautiful. That which will be is already. That which will be is already. Is it a child you want? The woman in America, 28 years, 17 IDS. I said to her, your baby is next to you. You did not carry your baby. Your baby has been there 28 years. That which will be, read it again. That which has been is now. And that which is to be already, that which is to be has already been. That which is to be has already been. That which is to be has already been. So if you are crying, oh God, he'll do it. God will say it's already been. That's why he said as soon as you hear his word, you should begin to praise him. God is not a tyrant that we say, oh, praise me for nothing. He's telling you to praise him because as you begin to praise him, your faith will be lifted and as your faith is lifted, that which is already will begin to flow into your life. Stop judging by the physical. Stop judging by what you can see. Stop judging by how the physical is looking. If we had judged by the physical, we wouldn't have done our carpets. But God, I, I remember, I said, God said, that which will be, so this carpet is somewhere already. If we don't receive it, we can still say, okay, when we are ready, and we think it's in our own strength. And the struggling is the hindrance. Our constant attempt to make things happen is the blocker. I remember Jesus said, of my own self, I can do nothing. Is that not what Jesus said? Jesus said, of my own self, I can do nothing. But with the Father in me, I can do everything. And what did Jesus, whenever Jesus came into a situation that was difficult, what did he do? Father, I thank you. <laughs> Is that not what he did? Whenever Jesus faced an impossible situation where he knew that it, I can't do nothing here, what did he do? He said, Father, I thank you. I know you always hear me. You have had me. Please give these 5,000 people. I only have three loaves and two fishes. What happened? We missed the key. That's why God is saying, May all the kings of the earth praise me when they hear my word. Praise me as soon as you hear my word. Begin to praise me. Don't try in your own power to orchestrate things. Don't try in your own power to do things. Don't try in your own power to try and help God. When we try to help God, we create problems. When we try to help God, we, 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 we stand in the way of God and we block that which is to be. 
How many times do you wake up and, oh God, I pray that the sun will shine today. Oh God, please let the sun shine today. Oh Father God, please, I want to plant this thing, apples. Oh God, I pray that when it comes out, it will be apples. Oh God, I pray that when it comes out, it will be apples. Oh Father God, this plane, I want you to, to change the law of gravity. I want you, if I throw something from upstairs, let it not fall down. Everything, what we be is already. Our praying, 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 praying is most of the time ineffective because we don't know how to pray. We don't know how to pray. The promises are given to us so that we can know how to pray and pray aright. <coughs> We are not begging God for anything. God has finished his work. The Bible says on the seventh day, God has finished his work and God is resting. Everything is in place. It's just for us to align ourselves so that the goodness can flow into our lives. We just need to align ourselves with the word so that the promises of God can flow into our lives. Please go with me to Luke chapter 1. Something just dropped in my spirit. Please uh, read, for, read for us from your King James Version. Uh, Luke chapter 1, verses 38. Luke chapter 1, verses 38. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Praise God. When the angel came to Mary and told her, she was going to have a miracle child. The angel told her things that have never been done before. After the angel told her, she said, how will this thing be? Then the angel said, it's not your business to know how this thing will be. Okay? It's not your business to understand how God does his work. It's not your business to come and concern yourself with how God is going to do his work. She said, let it be unto me. Let. What does the word let mean? To allow what is already to come into your life. That should be our prayer. She said, I let let she said god as you said in your word let it be unto me as you said in your word let god said in his word none shall be barren in my house when was the last time we said let it be unto me as you said in your word god said none in my house shall lack anything we do not say let. Let means to allow that which is already. God said it is already. What is your responsibility? Your responsibility is to let in. Let it in. Allow it. Give it full permission. That which is already, let it come into my life. If we have this revelation and we use it, we will you will see that you will be getting more results and your prayer life will be different. Most of the time, we are fighting, we are doing so much warfare because we actually think that there is a power out there that hinders what God has for us. But from what I am seeing in the Bible, God is saying what we be is already. What we be is already. Not that it will be. Mary said, let it be. And do you know what she did after that? She began to praise God. Which is what God is telling us today. If you look after that in, 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 in Luke chapter 1, 
verse 46 it says Mary's song Mary's song she said I let the word in and since I have let the word in my own responsibility now is to praise God that's my own job now I have let the word in I have spoken the word the next thing I need to do is to begin to praise God why she knew that if we, she wasn't asking God to make anything she believed that as God spoke it is done and she trusted the word of God so many of us if it's us we say hey where did the virgin never have child Satan I bind you you are an angel of the devil you this angel it's the devil who sent you to come and finish me off I'm a virgin in Israel. How can I become pregnant? I'm even engaged. How can I become? I bind you, Satan. I bind you. I bind you. I take authority and I bind you. And we will bind all the good things that God has in store for us. God said, What you are asking for is already. God is not going to do anything new. God is not going to do anything again that he has not done. God is not doing anything new. He has finished his work. All we need to do is to align ourselves. Align ourselves. Put, it's like you want to get a, 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 a bit of sunshine. Maybe for your photography or something. You will look for the angle to align yourself. You are not going to pray to the sun and say, Oh sun, please change direction and shine this way. No, you will look for the angle through which the sun is coming and align your camera so that you can get the best light out of the sun that is already shining. If you decide, Oh, I'm going to just pray for the sun so that the sun can just move and shine in the area I want you to shine, you will pray for a long time. That's the same thing. We just need to align ourselves and put ourselves in line so that the promise which is already there will just begin to flow into our lives and flow into our lives and flow into our lives. God said to me, say, daughter, I am the capsule that is inside my word. I am the capsule that is inside my word. I am raw. God say I am raw. Inside each promise, I sit inside. Like you know when you take an egg and you break the egg and the yolk. When you look at the egg, it's just shell. But when you break that egg, something comes out. God said the same way you see that yoke coming out of where you hatch it, I am already inside my word. My word is already flesh. Every promise is flesh. Every promise of God is already flesh. God is not going to do anything new. Again, he has finished. The word of God is flesh, already flesh. Nobody can tell me otherwise. The word is already flesh. Because when I apply the word of God, knowing as flesh, whenever I'm able to remember, I just know that the word is instantly available. I see immediate results. But at times I don't remember. But whenever I can apply the word, whenever I can speak the word, with the knowledge in me that the word is already flesh, and dwelling. God said the word is already flesh and is dwelling with us. Which means that the word of God is already tangible and is with you at this present moment. When my leg was broken, I remember that the word is flesh. I took a secret at the seven, six and seven. I began to drop it into my leg. I began to drop it. By morning, my bones have joined themselves back again. Bone to bone. The bone has come back, joined itself back. 
I went back the next day to the hospital. The doctor looked at me and said, What happened? Your bones are back. I said, I prayed. Back, the bone joined itself back, bone to bone. The scripture is in Ezekiel 37. It says the, the, the bone should come back bone to bone. I began to pick that scripture. That day, I remember that the word is already flesh. Now, it's not coming from heaven. It's already flesh. The word of God is already flesh. And I began to pick it. Drop it in this leg. It was this bone here that separated. I began to drop it. I began to drop it. Six times I did it in six hours. Every time I did it, one hour. I picked that word that said, the bone should come back bone to bone. Bone to bone. And I began to drop it into the side of the breakage. And by morning, I went, I finished back in. And as I rubbed my leg, I fed the bone. Because this bone here was broken. That bone had joined itself back bone to bone overnight. Some of you that were here, I shared how I, I gave this same scripture to my sister whose whole ligaments were damaged in America. She spoke the word by Monday, from Saturday to Monday, by Monday, her ligaments have joined themselves back again. Bone to bone. The word of God is already flesh and is dwelling among us. Let us stop praying and this. There is no point for us rattling away scriptures and we are not doing anything with the word of God. You don't need too many. Pick up a promise and let that promise germinate it. You know, incubate that promise. Let that promise come into manifestation in your life and bring you glory. Praise be to God. And the name of the Lord will be glorified in your life. That which will be is already that which will be is already. The Bible says there is no new thing under the sun. The Bible says there is no new thing under the sun. So for us to be asking God to do something, oh God, do this, do this, is a waste of time. We should ask God in faith. We should be able to come to God with the knowledge that he said he has finished his work. And when we ask him, we should ask him with the, with, the, um, with the knowledge that he has already done for us that which we are asking already. We should align ourselves in such a way that we are able to say, let it be unto me according to this word. And the promises of God, they are clear. The promises of God are clear. The will of God for us in every situation is clear. Is there any promise that you are believing for that is not clear to you? The promises of God, they are clear. If it's a need you have, God said, I will meet every need. Is that coded? Even an illiterate can, can read that and understand. The promises are very clear. Now, God said, I will meet every need. Why do we still not have our needs met? The promises are clear. It's our praying and our believing that is wrong. God says that which we be is already now. Now. Not tomorrow. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of God's favor. It's now. It's now. You, Father, thank you. It's all now. Praise God. Hallelujah. All is now. All is now. Always. Everything we need is always now. It has already been made and can never be unmade. 
what God has. The Bible says, whatsoever God doeth is forever. It's the fact, the Bible so see it that it says, nothing can be added and nothing can be taken from it. Whatever God has done is already. Nothing can be added to it and nothing can be taken from it. So when we come and say, oh, I've been praying in the word of God and it's like nothing is happening. Eh? You pray in the word of God and nothing is happening. The word of God is God. God is the capsule inside his word. God Almighty is the capsule. The yoke, when you break that egg, and the yoke comes out inside every promise. God is inside every promise. I want you to prove this word that we are preaching today. If you can prove it, go and prove this word that we are preaching today. Pick just one promise of what you are believing God for. Pick one promise. If you need to swallow it like capsule, begin to swallow it like capsule. I swallow the word of God like capsule. I swallow the word of God like capsule. Begin to swallow that word like capsule. Do it every day, morning and night, for 30 days, and see if you will not have a great and mighty testimony. God Almighty is the one inside His Word. The woman looking for child for 28 years, I was able to convince her just to swallow the word. Let her just swallow the word and carry her baby. I said, just carry your baby and just imagine yourself a happy mother. She did it for two months and she took him. She will come and say, Veronica, is this really true? Is this really happening to me? <laughs> Every time she comes in, it's like it's a dream to her. Veronica, that's why she put Veronica. Is this real? I can see this. This is real. This is real. so. Where were you all this time? <laughs> he came back. Where was I all this time? <laughs> I said, I said to her, I was always there. Twenty-eight years. Your baby is right next to you, and you didn't come. Right now, I was just able to convince her. I said, that baby, the Bible says what we be is already. God did not withhold child from you for 28 years. It's just that you didn't know. I said, now begin to carry baby. Eh? Every day, just nurse the baby for five minutes. Just see yourself pregnant. See yourself happy. Call the name of your baby. Just see yourself. And then speak the promise in your spirit. And the happy mother of children. Psalm 113 verse 9 says, I'm a happy mother of children. Psalm 113 verse 9. I swallow you like mercy. Go and offload your cargo in my belly. Offload all that you are carrying inside me. Only two months she did it. And she got pregnant. Don't worry. At times we may go to the doctors. They will say, is this? Is that? The word of God. God has guaranteed his word. So don't worry about yourself. It's not about you. It's about the glory of God. It's about the integrity of God's word. It's not about you. It's not about your egg or your sperm or your this or the count count. It's not. It's got nothing to do with you. It's about the integrity of what God has spoken. It's about the integrity. The Bible says this word that God wrote, He has exalted it. The word of God, the Bible says He even exalted His word above His name. So if you are holding on to the word, if you are trusting in the word, if you are really believing the word, then it can never fail. There is no margin or room for failure in God's word. 
there's a sister who was arrested um, um, in, in March. Where yeah, was in March? She was arrested in February, working with um, um, false papers. And um, she was on a visitor's visa. So they tried her, they seized all the money she worked, and they are going to deport her, and she can never come back to England. Her sister, who is a friend of mine, contacted me and said, what can we do if they deport my sister? Most of her family is here. If they deport her, she can never come back. I said, okay, I'll give you just one scripture. And we will use it to pray morning and night. Once you speak that scripture, begin to just worship God. And I gave her the scripture that whom the Lord shall set free is free indeed. I said she should use that scripture to pray every day. And she should tell God that, Father, if they deport me from this country, I can't come again. My sisters are here. My family is here. My loved ones are here. I said use that scripture to pray. And Almighty God will glorify His name. He will do something. She was in the detention center. She was using that word. God has set me free. I am free indeed. God has set me free. I am free indeed. They were waiting for her deportation date and everything. Then somebody said um, to them, why don't they do an appeal? They said ah, she can't get legal aid. The, the sisters got rallied around. They got a, a, the lawyer to put in an appeal. Do you know why she went for an appeal? The judge said they should release her. She doesn't have any rights whatsoever to be in this country. They release her, she's at home today. The judge said they should release her. She's at home now. The word of God does not need your help. You may say, oh, how, how, can, how, can, how is God going to do this thing? How is it possible? I've tried all in my power. Which power do you have? I've gone everywhere. I've done everything. It's time to rest in the goodness of God. If we can rest, just rest. Just cease from your struggle. Cease from, you know, cease from everything. Just stop the struggle. The struggle, you know, at times it's like you are trying to breastfeed a baby. The breast is in front of the baby. You are saying, baby, take. And the baby is doing like you. And you are saying, but the breast is in front of you. Take the breast. And the baby is busy fighting, looking for the breast that is right in front of, of the baby to drink. That's what we have been doing. God is saying, I have prepared a table before you. Come and sit and eat. Ah, I do not qualify you. How can I come and sit and eat? I need to suffer. Man must suffer. Man must suffer before I can eat. Who told you that? What we be is already. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is at hand is at hand the kingdom of god is at hand what we need is at hand i'm telling you if we can begin to trust god and to believe god and stop our struggles stop the struggle the struggle is the blockage the struggle have you ever had somebody say i was praying prayer and then i even have just left it i stopped praying then it happened have you had testimonies like that? Where people say, no, it's when I stop praying. It's when I even gave up hope that it happened. You know what you did? You stepped out of the way. All oh, that's what the, because all the time the person was praying, it was standing in the way. It was still in control. It's like you said, oh, you, um, you, 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 you are not driving the car. You, you, uh, but yet you are the one driving. Many times, when people give that testimony, just remember that it's when they stepped out of the way that God moved in. God is not going to struggle driving safely with you, isn't he? 
when you are driving, God will say you are you are the expert driver. Keep driving. But the day you make up your mind and say, I'm gonna let God drive the car, uh -huh, then Almighty God can drive the car the way He wants it to drive. What we be is already. Praise God. Please, if you can rest, just lift up your hands and receive rest. Just lift up your hands and say, Father, I receive your rest. In this situation, I receive rest. Just give me rest in this situation. Just let me have rest, oh God. I just want to rest in your goodness. I just want to rest in your mercy. I am tired of the struggles. I am tired of trying to make things happen and yet they are not happening. Father, I just want to rest and let you take over. I just want you to take over, drive this car the way you want to drive it. Do whatsoever you want to do the way you want to do it, Father. I am stepping aside for you, oh God. Praise be to God. If even Jesus could not do it of his own, Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, is the same today, and is the same forever. If he did it yesterday, what makes you think he won't do it today? Some people will say their case is hopeless. Have you seen God do that thing for somebody before? Then why is your own case hopeless? Did you hear the testimony of what God did for somebody which is exactly what you need? If God had made Sarah at 91 to keep home, you are 50, you are saying, oh, I'm finished. If he did it for Sarah yesterday, will he not do it for you today? Will he not do it for her tomorrow? If God gave somebody a financial breakthrough, do, you, do we think that God is a tyrant that holds his koboko like this and is just waiting? Ah, this, that girl is good. I will bless her. This one is bad. I won't bless her. This one. Then the wicked people, have you seen wicked people that are so rich? Then God would have said, you are so wicked, I may not bless you. But why are those people rich? It's because they open their spirit to receive that which is already. You see, there is no lock on God's door. The Spirit of God showed me, the day the Spirit of God showed me, the, the, the riches of God there is boundless. As I began to break down the word bound, boundless, I said, hang on, what I'm seeing here is actually saying that the riches of there is no God. There is no God man there waiting to say, oh, you are a bad girl, you can't come and take what you need. We don't just go because of our wrong mindset, our wrong believing, but all that we need is at hand. Because I looked for a long time to see why our experiences was not tallying with who God is. Why does our day-to-day -day experience not tally with who God is, with the character of God? Carol, if you have a little child who goes to school and comes back when you are at work, want to keep their food, what they will eat after school. You're not going to put it on this height, isn't it? You will put it on a small height. When the child comes, you can quick know, he knows his hands can reach it. Then why do we think that God will take our food, our daily bread, the things we need, and put it high there where we can reach it? God see you being evil. You being evil, you even know how to give good things to your children. So much less of Almighty God. Now, when I begin to get the revelation of scriptures that I knew before, I knew that it has never been God's fault. I begin.
begin to put God in the place of what I will even do for my own children. And I began to realize that it's we not knowing our right what belongs to us that has caused us to suffer. God will never, never, never withhold anything good from us. No matter how bad my child has been, I'm not going to say this child we won't eat today because you are bad and we seize your food. God is a good God. The Bible says He is so good that He causes the sun to shine on both the righteous and the wicked. That's how good our God is. Please take the things that you need. They are freely available to you. God is not a punishing God. Just waiting to punish people. If not, the world would have fallen up long ago. But he gives us this long rope. We fall so many times. We fail so many times. But mercy still keeps carrying us. He is not a wicked God. Just waiting to punish people and bang them on the head and say, hmm, you, you didn't pay that today, so you can't eat. You can't pay your rent. It's not that kind of God. And I'm so happy I've discovered the God that loves me. Even when I fall, even when I sin, even I can go to him and say, Father, today I sin, though. Oh, but I still need you. Like a mother, he will carry me and say, Baby, you are not here. But I forgive you. Will you kill your child because he's sin? Then why do we think God is punishing us? He expects us to say, I am sorry, and we should forgive ourselves and move on with him. Praise God. Hallelujah. When you go into prayer, it is important that you realize that what you are praying for is already. All you ever need to do is to come up higher and higher to that place where your trust is 100% in God's word. Release everything to him and trust him. Just release it. Rest. You know the mind is the enemy. Your mind, this mind. <laughs> the other day I was battling with my mind. It will bring this one, I will send it back. It will bring, you know, it, it, it brings suggestion. It wants you to accept it. Ah, that money, did you say that ah, this woman no be at all? Let me just leave her. He will say, You are this. I will say, No, you are this, not me. <laughs> he will say this. I will say, No, I give it back. I am Christ. I am the Son of the Living God. He will bring another one. We give it back. <laughs> After a while, it left. Mm -hmm. Don't take those suggestions. Don't agree with your enemy. Mm -hmm. Only a fool will agree with his enemy. No wise person will agree. The mind comes, he tells oh, you, do you think God will answer him? Don't mind Pastor Veronica, all those things she's saying is not for people like you. Then we will accept. I said, mm -mm. I said, this money, any rubbish you bring, I'm equal to the tax. Rubbish thinking. Ah, it doesn't happen to people like you are saying, in short, it has already happened. What can you do? Say, you, you, you. Are. I said, no, I am the blessed of God. I am the apple of his eyes. I was just having the battle in my mind. It was coming, I was giving it back. Say, you are this. I said, no, I am this. This is what is written about me. I am the crown of his glory. I am his feet. I am the feet of Jesus. I am the hand of Jesus. I am the image of Jesus. I represent the Christ. I am, I am, I am, I am, I am. Rest. Try to quieten the mind from time to time. Don't let it have its way all the time. As if it's the boss. Try to tell you what you can do, what you can't do, where you can go, where you can't go. Quieten the mind. Sometimes sit down and try to quieten the mind. 
Bible says, be still. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. That's why God said, when we hear his words, we are to immediately begin to praise him. We are immediately begin to exalt him. The Bible says, may all the kings of the earth praise him when they hear the words of his mouth. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. The glory of the Lord is great. The glory of the Lord is great. God said we should begin to praise him as soon as we receive the promise like Mary did and Mary conceived the impossible. And I, I, I look at Mary's life. You do you know what Mary said in this song? She said, all generations will call me blessed. She predicted her destiny in her worship. She said, me, Mary, all the whole generations that we live, they must call me blessed. She refused. Her. She used her mouth. She used her tongue to write her destiny. And God stamped it for us. Is Mary better than us? If he did it for her, he will do it for you. He will do it for me as well. But what are we saying? Don't call yourself what your enemy calls you. Call yourself what God calls you. The Bible says, when we hear the word of God, we should immediately begin to praise him. Praise him. Tell him how wonderful he is. Tell him how great he is. Tell him you trust him. Like Mary said, let it be unto me as you said, Father. Let it be unto me as you said, O God. Let it be unto me. I agree with your word, Father. I'm in agreement with your promise. Let it be unto me as it is written. Praise be to God. We are to glorify him when we hear his word. God says, as soon as you hear my word, you should begin to commend me. Begin to commend me. Praise me. Tell me how great I am. Ah, if I come and begin to praise you. Ah, my friend, okay. God bless you. Thank you so much. You are the best in the world. You are my, anything you have, you will give me. Praise God. I remember there was a, a, a book I was reading about Alexandra the Great. A poor man came and said, Alexandra, I want you to give me some things. He said, go to my store manager and ask him for whatever you want. So this, when the man got to the store manager, now, he now brought out a long list. <laughs> so after asking the store manager for all those things, the store manager said, you must be a thief. You came with all this list, then the king said I should give you so you came with all he said yes, he said the king said you should give me whatever I ask. Yeah. The man went back to Alexandra and said, The man you sent, this is the list he brought. Alexandra said, Go and give him everything he asked and double it. He asked me like a king, and I'm going to give it to him like a king. Praise be to God. He said, he, when he came to me, he came to me and he asked me like a king. So give it, go and double everything he asked. Because I have to give him also like the king that I am. Praise be to God. God says, if you come to me like a king, I'm going to show you that I am a king. God said, when you hear my words, immediately you hear my words, you should begin to, you should begin to commend me. You should immediately begin to bless me. You should immediately begin to, to thank me. Because I am a king. If Alexandra can do that, Talk much less of our God. The Bible says when we hear God's word, we should begin to rave about it. We are to rave about the word of God. Have you ever seen these young children raving about their music? Have you seen them how they rave? They put their trousers here like this. And they, you see them, they put that thing in there. You are talking to they can't even hear you. They are raving. Have you seen them in the party where they are raving? Where they are dancing? They are dancing to nothing. Why can't we rave for our God? Why can't we praise Him? Hallelujah. Father, I praise you. Father, I praise you. Father, I bless you. It is done. Let it be unto me as you said. Let it be unto me as you said. Let it be unto me as you said. Father, I rave about you. I rave about you. You are so good. You are so good. You are so good. You are such a good God. When was the last time you 
you raped for God? Even husband and wife. When was the last time you took your wife on a dancing trip in the bedroom so that God Almighty can come and join in the dance and glorify His name in your life? When was the last time you raved about His power? You raved about His goodness? All we do is talk about what the devil is doing. Who is the devil? Who is the devil? And what is the devil doing? Devil did need this. Devil said this. I want to begin to see Christians talk much more about what God told them than what the devil said. Praise be to God. It's time to read about God. The woman with the issue of blood. Hallelujah. When she heard about Jesus, the Bible says, when she heard about Jesus, she began to read about Jesus. The woman said, that, that man, that Jesus, I am going. I am going to Jesus. And when I get to Jesus, I will be made whole. I will be made whole. I am going to Jesus. When I get to Jesus, I will be made whole. I am going to Jesus. I am going to my Jesus. I am going to Jesus. She wasn't even a believer. The woman was ready about the Christ. She said, you people have been laughing about me, but I found my answer. I am going to Jesus. She already did, received her miracle before she ever went to that meeting. She said, I'm going to Jesus. There is no secret to what God can do. What is done for them. He will do for you. With his arms wide open, Jesus has answered you. For there is no secret to what God can For there is no secret to what God When was the last time you read about him? The lover of our soul. He said, May all the kings of the earth praise him. He said, May all the kings of the earth praise him. He said, When you hear my word, you should praise me. He said, When you hear my word, you should praise me. He said, When you hear my word, you should praise me. For the glory of the Lord, the glory of the risen Lord, the glory of the risen Lord, the glory of the risen, the glory of the risen Lord, oh, the glory of the risen Lord is great, the glory, the glory of the risen. He said, when you hear my word, you should praise me. He said, praise me. He said, when you hear my word, you should praise me. He said, when you hear my word, praise me. I have done it already. I have done it already. And as you praise me, your very hands will handle the very word of life. He said, when you hear my word, praise me. When you hear the word of my mouth, praise me. The glory of the risen Lord. The glory of the risen Lord. The glory, the glory of the risen Lord. The glory, the glory is the glory of the risen you said we should rave about you. Father, we have a Surya Handa. We have not known how to rave about you. Teach us how to rave about you. 
Teach us how to reign about you. That the good that so fills the earth we begin to manifest in everything we do. The Bible says that the whole earth is full of your goodness. The Bible says that the earth is full of the goodness of God. The goodness of God. The goodness of God. Why then should we go around without turning good in our lives? When the whole earth is full of your goodness. The Bible says day after day, night after night, your glory pours for speech. There is no place where your glory is not seen. Help us, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord Jesus. Let us not live like of us. We are not of us. The Spirit of God is here. We are not of us. Allah Basuri, how can we go begging? How can we go asking God for one thing? Yea, ye have no answer. Teach us. Teach us the things that work, O oh God. Teach us the things that work, Father God. If the world see your glory in our lives, they will run to you. How can we be surrounded with water and yet be thirsty? We confess our ignorance. Help us. How can we be surrounded by babies and yet we are begging for children? How can we be surrounded by money yet every day we are saying we are broke? How can we be surrounded by abundance and yet every day we say we have nothing? Because our eyes are blind. Open our eyes that we may see. That we may see, O oh God. Oh, that we may see, Father God, the good that so surrounds us. Don't let anyone leave this place like they came, Father. That which we be is already. I am a Baba Saka. That which we be is already. What are we looking for? What are we looking for? What are we looking for? Spirit of God. Spirit of God. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Spirit of Jesus, Spirit of Jesus, we are not orphans. We acknowledge you as our parents. We are not of us. The creator of the universe is our parent. The ruler of the heavens and the earth is our parent. The one that gives child is our parent. How can we be begging for child? The one that gives abundance is our parent. Can Prince Charles beg? Forgive us. Help us, let our eyes be open, that we may see that the earth is full of your goodness, O oh God. The earth is full of your goodness. The earth is full of your goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Help us, O oh God. Help us, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless you. We honor you for your word. We thank you for your word. We glorify you for your word is beautiful. Your word is truth. Your word is truth. We will not walk in darkness. We will not walk around and miss. Your word is truth. We receive from your boundless glory, your boundless beauty, an abundance of grain and new wine. We refuse to remain the same. All that which is, is already. We will not go around like ignorant people, begging for the things that are already ours. We lift up our hands and our hearts, and we receive from the boundless riches of Christ everything that we need. We are not asking for that which is ours. We receive from your hand the good that we need. We desire or need 
in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. May all the kings of the head princes, when they hear the words, Say, why do you want us to praise you? When we hear the words of your mouth, you said, Bear my people. Why I told them to praise me as soon as they get the revelation of my promise is because that which they want is already. And there's nothing whatsoever stopping it. I am the one that sits inside my word. I am the castle that sits inside my word. There is nobody, there is no power. Who is the power that can stop the word from manifesting in your life? There is no power. If you say there is a power, then you are saying that there is someone who can stop God. God is his word. His word is him. The Bible says God has so exalted his word even above his name. Let me tell you, if you put your trust and your faith in God's word, nothing, the doctor's report, nothing whatsoever can stop the promise. The word of God is unstoppable. The Bible says it's like a rolling stone. Anybody that stands in the way of the rolling stone shall be crushed to pieces. There is no power anywhere. There is no circumstance anywhere that can interfere with the word of God. God said that which you need, my child, is already. Tell me, if Carol left a, a, a dinner for, for her, her child in the oven where his hands can reach it, who then can come from outside and come and... Oh, I said, no, she knows that she... Yeah. 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 